love it. We're in, we're in frame, we're all good, we're ready. I have my coffee, guess it's hot. I don't know why I made a hot coffee today. I will say it's probably 110 outside here in Arizona, but it's fine. I have the air conditioner way down, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Today is gonna be great. It is the last video in this series, the at work series or the work with me series, whatever we're calling it. And it is the type nine's turn. I'm so excited. I'm a type nine and so this actually was super fun for me to kind of research and, and gather my thoughts and gather what I wanna talk about today on working with a type nine. But before we get started, I have to show you the shirt I'm wearing, guys. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, it says, it says, it's fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. How perfect is this shirt for the type nine? When I saw it, I don't even know where I bought it from. If I can figure it out, I'll link it down below. But I, when I saw it, I was like, I have to have that because that's like kind of, I actually won an award one time. I was a youth leader at a church and my award said, it's fine, everything's fine. And I, can I be honest with you? I didn't even know I said that. This was like a long time ago and I had no idea that that's how I came across. And at first I was like, wait, that kind of hurts my feelings. But no, it's true. As nines, we do. We kind of are that go with the flow. It's fine. Everything's fine. But yeah, so I wanted to show you this shirt. I thought it was pretty cool for this video today. But let's dive into what this video is about. Okay, so whether you are a nine, you work for a nine, or you work with a nine, this video is going to be for you. And truth be told, this has been kind of like a, a work with me series. When I first started this series, I was like, oh, I really want people to learn to work together a little bit better, understand each other better. I teach a lot of staffs and teams, and um, this is something I teach a lot on, on how we can work cohesively together. So I thought, oh, I'll do a series on all the types, and this will help people understand each other, right? And as I went through this series, um, each one, and I will say, I know type ones feel like they got gypped because that was the first video I did, and their video is really short. I will go make a part two for the type ones, but I wanna say, as I got into the series, I realized that this was so much more than just a work with me series. You know, I'm covering who they are, strengths, growth practices, areas of development, how to work with them, how to communicate with them, how to get along with them. But I realized this is helping each type that I'm teaching on, like say it's today's type nine, you know, you would think, oh, it's people who work with a type nine, but also it's helping that type also. I had one subscriber say that, thank you so much for making this video. She is actually gonna show it to her family so that they can understand her better. And I was like, yes, that is so great. That is what these are meant for. These are meant to share and have people understand you better. Because if, if you're a certain type and you're watching a video and you're like, wow, this really resonates with me and this hits home, share it, share it with other people. Let them know like, yeah, that is, I totally relate to that and you can understand me better because what is the goal of the Enneagram? Well, it's a tool that we use for self-awareness for growth, for looking inside, looking at our motivations and our behaviors, but also it's a tool that helps us understand the people in our life, which is just as important. It's so important to understand that we are all made different and we show up differently, we think differently, we have different motivations, and so that's what makes us different. And so that's the whole, that's been the whole purpose of this uh, series, just to help you guys live more cohesively together and, and just with more grace and compassion and understanding for each other and yourself. All right, so anyways, that's a ton. I didn't mean to like, who am I kidding? I'm a nine, we can go off on a tangent. But anyways, it's fine for the nine video, right? But yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. It's super important. If you guys want me to continue making videos on this platform, just give my channel a like and a subscribe and I know that you want more and I appreciate it so much. But anyways, let's dive into who are they? Who are the type nines? They are called the peacemaker, the mediator. Their most basic desire is to have internal peace, like a peace of mind. It's their most basic desire. And one of their biggest fears is conflict. So they tend to avoid conflict with the world around them. That is something that they're running away from them because you know, our basic fear is something we're running away from. Our basic desire is what we're running towards. And so that desire is peace of mind. That fear is conflict and even loss and separation of people and um, those kind of things. But if you wanna know more about the type nine that goes over all the core fears, core desires, core weaknesses, core longings, the wings, all of that. I'll link a couple of those videos down below and maybe one right here. I think it's that side. <laughs> I never know what side it is, guys. So anyways, um, but let's keep going. Nines are, they're agreeable, they're accepting, they're inclusive. Nines are great at seeing all points of view and they have an extremely hard time making decisions. 
I will attest to that. They are easygoing, unpretentious, creatures of habit, mm -hmm, and good natured. So in a nutshell, the nine, they're a little more quiet depending, well, really depending on their wing, um, but they are just the ones that try and bring everybody together, which is why I teach the Enneagram, right? They're the ones that are just like always trying to make peace wherever they go. So let's go to the next thing and talk about the nine's strengths. What are their strengths? Their first really big strength is they have this ability to see all points of view, which can frustrate people, especially if they're like, well, I only want you to see my point of view. That's just not the nine. The nine actually, whoever they're with, they're actually going to be able to understand their point of view too, which again makes them great peacemakers and mediators. And with this strength, they do not play favorites and they do not think anyone else is more important than someone else. Everybody kind of is on the same even playing field to them. But because a nine will want to help people hear each other and find that common ground. That is a motivation for a nine is to help people find that common ground and understand each other. And it's seriously such a strength because everyone will feel heard. And another strength is they are great at supporting others so much that they will actually focus on the other person and help them succeed and help them with their goals without expecting anything in return usually. And emotionally, they are pretty steady and balanced and even keeled. They, they kind of just don't have high highs or low lows. They kind of just are the same most of the time. You know, there is every once in a while, they are a part of that anger triad and their anger is asleep, but every once in a while it does wake up. And so they can have that. But for the most part, they're just go with the flow, everything's fine, you know, type of people. Okay, so moving on to the next one, which is areas of development for the type nine. Okay, so the first area of development for a nine is they usually don't know their own needs, their own desires, their own agendas, they don't. They've actually put that voice kind of to sleep throughout their life. And so this is an area of development for them. They need to allow that to wake up. They need to start figuring out their own wants and desires and agendas. And I would say nines aren't even aware that they don't have needs and agendas. I think like there's, they could be so asleep that they're like, no, 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 I don't need anything. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, it's all about you. That's where I'm saying, guys, if you're a nine, that's not okay, that's not healthy. Ask yourself, figure out what your own needs and desires are and go after them. This will serve you well. And another thing with that being unaware of their own needs and desires is they're so unaware of their own needs and desires, usually they know what everyone else needs. Literally, they know. They know what you need, they'll do it, they'll, you know, they'll make sure that happens, but they don't know their own needs and desires. And the reason why I say like it'll serve you well to know this is because it will eventually lead to resentment and you know come out sideways and you won't even know why you're feeling resentful. And it really will be because you're always focused on everyone else and not asking yourself what your own needs and desires are. It's important, guys. So I would say you need to ask yourself, start asking yourself, what do I want? And it's gonna be super hard at the beginning to even come up with an answer. I know I'm a nine, I struggled with this. But the more you ask, the more you're, you'll respond and go, okay, what do I want? Because you're kind of waking it up because you've put yourself to sleep. And then I would say, if you're not a nine and you're watching this and you have a nine on your team or in your life, ask them, what do you want? And, and they're probably their first response is gonna be, I don't know, because they do not know. They haven't asked themselves that. And so that's why I'm really hitting this hard, um, figuring out what do you want? And sometimes it's okay to say, I don't know. And it will, like I said, it'll be okay to say, I don't know, but eventually you're gonna come up with something because the more you do this, the more you're going to connect with yourself and that's important. I would say the next area of development is nines have a hard time facing conflict, right? Conflict is super hard for a nine. I know for myself, I would rather ignore the problem forever than actually cause conflict by saying my own opinion. And, and a nine will probably start to feel sick if they have to engage in conflict, they'll either get mad because they feel like that person is making them have to show up and engage or they'll feel sick and they'll be like, oh, this is making me so sick and it'll actually cause them actual discomfort because they don't want to cause conflict because they're afraid that the person, you know, won't hear them out or might leave them or whatever it is. Um, but also it's disrupting their peace of mind. And so it's really hard for them to make that decision. But what I found personally is sometimes conflict, you, sometimes we have to engage in conflict, guys, because it leads to true peace. Not just the peace of mind that allows you to kind of zone out and numb out, but real peace. So I would challenge you if you are a nine watching this, that conflict is gonna happen and sometimes you're gonna have to choose to walk through it to get to actual peace, which is what you desire. And I always say like for myself, I don't want false peace. 
just because I'm ignoring it, I do want that true peace. It's it feels so much better in my in my body, in my soul, in my mind. It just feels better. And so that's what I challenge nines to do. Not like cause conflict like crazy, but when the situation calls for you to have an opinion that might cause conflict, I would say you know, walk through it to get to the other side of that true peace. So anyways, last area of development for the nine is your own stress. Because what does a nine say all the time? It's on my shirt. It's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. I can't tell you how many type nines that I have coached where I will ask them a question and, and it maybe they're feeling hurt or something's going on in their life. And I'll ask them like, well, how did that make you feel? And they'll say, it's fine. Everything's, you know, no big deal. I felt fine. It was okay. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm a type nine and I'm going, there's no way it's okay. But you've, you've silenced that voice for so long that you actually believe that it is okay. And the area of development that I want to say, the growth um, here is it's okay. People need to know if you're not okay. They need to carry that. You carry that for others. They need to carry that too. They need to know. They need to be able to react and have opinions and go, okay, I didn't mean to hurt you or I didn't mean to say that and, and clean it up on their own side. And so when you just ignore it and pretend like everything's okay, the other person has no idea that everything's not okay. And, and like I already hit on earlier, it will come out somehow. It will come out sideways and we don't want that. And so that is why I say, work on this, work on letting other people know that it's not okay sometimes. So, all right, that felt like a lot to me. That felt very conflicting for me to even teach on um, as a nine, but I know it's so important. I know it's hard lessons I've had to learn and I wanted to share it with you guys, but let's move on to, you might be working with a type nine if. Okay, so the first one is, they never know where they wanna go for lunch. <laughs> and I'm just saying lunch because I'm saying this is the workplace, right? And a lot of times a nine you go, okay, where do you wanna go for lunch? And they're gonna go, I don't care. And a lot of times they actually don't care, guys. And that's okay. And I would say a lot of times, and this, I'm totally speaking to myself here and I've, I've told my husband this, a lot of times we know what we don't want, but we don't know what we do want. And so, you know, it'll be one of those like, hey, where do you wanna go? I don't care. You know, and they might go, well, do you wanna go um, for pizza? And they're like, ah, oh, not pizza. <laughs> and you're like, wait, so you do care, right? I know because I'm a nine. So anyways, that's one of the, you might be working with a type nine. If the next thing is they are the ones that are, are pretty quiet in meetings, but I will tell you guys, they are listening They're They are totally listening to every single person. They're actually feeling the room and feeling the responses and totally alert and aware the entire time. But usually they're more quiet. The next thing I would say is um, they're really great to talk to. They're always gonna listen and um, if, and listen to your point of view and be understanding to you. So that's another one. Another you might be working with a type nine if is if they're extremely supportive of their team, they work really hard to support them and they don't wanna take credit for things usually. They're fine with anybody else taking the credit, but they work really hard on the team. So usually that might be a type nine. The last thing is they have a really hard time making decisions. I kinda of already hit on this and it'll take them days to decide. And usually you have to put pressure on them in order for them to decide. Um, but yeah, so that's another, you might be working with a type nine if, but moving right into what's great about working with a type nine. First one, they are great listeners and they always make you feel heard, kind of already, touched on that one. The second one, they are great at making people feel accepted and included all the time. Um, I had somebody tell me a while back that that was one of my superpowers. She goes, you always make sure everybody feels included and everyone feels accepted. And I'm like, yes, yes, that is, it, it kind of is a superpower, right? Because I am aware now that that's not everyone's first instinct and that's okay. Um, we're all made differently to help each other, but that is my first instinct usually. The next one is they are easy to talk to. Uh, a lot of times you're gonna find yourself telling them like your whole life story because they're so easy to talk to. And they genuinely want to listen, they're genuine. They're like, yeah, and, and you can tell them all, and you just feel heard. And another great thing is they help people on your team or the team find common ground. Again, I've hit on that one too, but that's a great strength and um, a great thing about working with the type nine. And the last one I would say is they they don't like gossip. They don't like it when people bring gossip to them. But I will say a lot of times if it does happen, and I know this from experience, it's like you'll listen and you're quiet and people think like, oh, you're listening and you're quiet. 
Um, so they'll keep going, but I will say they don't like it and their silence doesn't mean they're agreeing with you. Um, so take that to heart. So anyways, all right, let's move on to nine. Say it's hard working with others because first thing is if people aren't really clear on their expectations of a nine, the nine will be like, Oh, I don't know what they expect of me. I, I'm not for sure. And then if that person even takes it to the next level and is like, Hey, this is what I need you to do. And I need you to do it by like in two hours, a nine is going to go, Oh my gosh, taking action to get results fast is harder for a nine. And also not, and they might not feel like, Oh, that wasn't clear enough for me to actually know what to do. So that could be hard for a nine to work with that kind of situation. The next thing is if people don't ask for their opinion, um, I know a lot of times people maybe assume like they don't have one. And like I, I've kind of said, like they, they're not a hundred percent sure of, their own opinion. They might not even know it, but they definitely want to be asked. Um, so their feelings don't get hurt. If they're overlooked on a team, if it's like, Hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And then there's the nine and, and you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, and you keep moving. That's totally going to hurt their feelings. Even though they might not have an opinion, they do want to be asked. And so keep that in mind when, um, that kind of situation arises. Another thing that's hard for a nine, is if people are being super assertive or even aggressive in a conversation, like really loud, um, a nine's probably not going to be able to break into that conversation. And you're, you're going to assume like, Oh, they never talk, but that's not true. They just don't know how to break into something. That's like everybody, you know, it's so loud and, 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 and assertive to where they're kind of like, well, I guess I'll just hang out and not say anything because it's just harder for them to break through that and push through that. So, okay. The next thing I would say is if they are made to be the center of attention for something good or bad, being the center of attention is going to be super hard for them. So stuff like that needs to be done in private, um, because it's hard for them to have that spotlight put on them. So, and the last thing is when people get into conflicts that they know could have been avoided, right? A nine usually knows because they're always listening and seeing points of views from everybody. So they usually know like, Oh, that could have been avoided, you know? And so that could be hard for them if people are um, getting into conflict when they know that it could have been avoided. All right. So let's move on to ways to communicate with a type nine. First one is be encouraging to them. Ask them about their own ideas and their own needs and, and create a safe environment for them to communicate to you their own needs and their ideas. So, and the next one is establish clear priorities and let them know exactly what needs to be done and how long they have to do it, but give them plenty of time to do it if possible, because like I've already hit on this, right? They need more time and it's going to take them a little while to um, understand exactly what is expected of them. Sometimes, not all the time, but I'm just saying, be clear on what your expectations are of them and the time limit that is needed. So, and the last thing is if you don't get a yes, it's probably a no. A lot of times, mis I, uh, like I said earlier, you mistake their silence for the answer you want. Just because they don't say no does not mean they're agreeing. Don't assume silence is a yes, because more than likely it's a no, but they just aren't able to tell you because it could cause conflict. So, um, something to keep in mind. But okay, so moving on to how to get along with a type nine. First thing is make an effort to make a personal connection with them. They will just appreciate if you get to know them on a deeper level. They're usually nice and kind and sweet and gentle. And they, they do need some of that in return. Obviously we're not saying, Hey, I show up this way in life. So you need to show up this way back to me. No, no, no. All I'm saying is make an effort to get to know them on a more personal level. The next one is nines do really well with lots of support. And so value their contribution, promote them. Like seriously, you're never going to have a nine. That's probably going to ask you for a promotion or try to showcase all their talents and gifts. And so this is where I'm just saying, like, if you're, if you have a nine on your team and, and you, and you see that they need to be promoted or, but you're like, well, they need to ask for it. I would say they're probably not going to ask for it. This is me telling you that they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid that their presence doesn't matter. Their opinions don't matter. And so it's really hard for them to ask for it. Maybe there's some growth there too, that needs to happen. But I would say, you know, if you're a boss or, or anyone in their life and you have that capability and you see that it's like, Oh, they do need to be, you know, praised or promoted or whatever it is. Don't hold back and give that to them. They would, they're going to give that to others. And so they do appreciate that in return, but not putting a spotlight on them. Remember that <laughs> not like, Hey guys, guess what? You know, so-and-so is getting a promotion today. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. They would not like that, but you know, in private calmly letting them know that you see them, their presence matters and whichever way you can show them that, even if it's just with your words, 
It's super important for a type 9. And the last one is on how to get along with a type 9 is they hate conflict, they hate criticism, and so a lot of times when this happens, they're going to withdraw. They're, you'll, you won't know it, but they've withdrawn inside themselves a lot of times. And the conflict, and if it's criticism or conflict, sometimes it's, like I said, it's going to make them angry. They're not even going to know they're angry, but it can make them angry. Um, but yeah, so let's move on to how to motivate a type nine. First thing is if, if anything helps motivate teens and other people, this is going to motivate and energize them. So anything that helps others get along, you know, peace, like, you know, be the peacemaker, mediation, people start getting along, any of that, this is actually going to motivate them. And this is going to help them to show up to their life because they're going to want that. They're going to want to bring the peace to other people. And they might hate conflict, but they love conflict resolution. Maybe not with them personally, but the others around them, they, they love it when conflict gets resolved and people get along. So oh, a huge, which is a huge reason why I go and I teach uh, staff and different organizations um, the Enneagram because I really, really, really believe that this can give us the tools to get along better and to have compassion for each other and understand each other. So anyways, that is something that's super important for a nine and motivates them. And the next thing I would say, if they feel safe, accepted and heard, this motivates them. This motivates them to be creative and do the work and show up and, and get things done. And the last thing I can think of for how to motivate a type nine is having a goal for them to have like a goal of um, internal rest in mind. So if they're like, okay, I have to do A, B, and C, and then I get to reward myself with rest or reading, or maybe it's a movie or TV or cooking or shopping or whatever it might be that there's the, that they find the most internal rest where they can just zone out and not have to be on is really important to a nine and this can motivate them. So if they're like, okay, if I do A, B, and C, then I get to, you know, choose this activity and and by activity I mean probably doing absolutely nothing um to find that rest and to have that internal rest so that is a motivator for a type nine okay so we're on the last thing guys uh this is my number 10 thing that I'm sharing and it is growth practices what are some growth practices for a type nine the first big one I would say for a nine and growing is to recognize that sometimes conflict is necessary and healthy this is important guys and I've, I've kind of already hit on this um earlier in the video, but it is important. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes we have to do it. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But I will say there's times where I've had to walk through stuff. And when I got to the other side, I was really proud of myself and proud of myself for standing up for what I believe in and for who I am. And the reward was true peace. And so that is a definite growth practice for a type nine. And I will say, Another reason why conflict is super important for us to engage in sometimes, because I know guys, the fear in conflict is that you're going to upset somebody, you're going to lose that relationship or something along those lines. But let me tell you what it actually looks like. When we don't choose to have conflict with somebody, we have conflict with ourselves. And I know if you're a nine, you know what I'm talking about because we replay it over in our head 1 million times, right? And we're in this internal place of like, oh, I can't find rest and I'm thinking about it and I'm worried. And it's like over and over and over, you're almost living this out so many times because you chose to not actually bring the conflict to the person. Instead, you're having conflict within yourself. And this does not lead to peace of mind. And you know that, right? It, it doesn't lead to peace of mind. It, it, it's like no peace of mind. And I know that you think like not, not, engaging in this conflict is, well, at least I'm still at peace with that person. But is it is the cost really enough that you might have kind of like a fake peace with that person because they don't know what's going on, but you have internal conflict? That's a big cost to pay. And I have learned this the hard way, guys. And I'm just speaking to you because I know I have learned this the hard way to where sometimes um, we have to engage. And, and conflict doesn't even mean like, you know, I don't even know, like being super mad and angry or anything. It could just be you showing up going, hey, when you said da, 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 that actually hurt my feelings. That's really hard for a nine. And if you're not a nine and you're hearing this, that is really hard for a nine to do. And so I would just say, don't let the casualty here be you. Let, you know, choose to show up to your own life. Choose to go, okay, I have to let that person know that this made me feel this way and, and work through it. Cause then they might come back with like, oh my gosh, I wasn't meaning that. And so, and, and then conflict resolution can happen. So, all right, so that's enough about the conflict growth practice. The next one I wanna talk about guys is stop putting everybody else first to where you never ever put your own self first. And the problem with that, and I know it sounds like, well, that's the right thing to do. I get that, I definitely understand that. But I also would say a type nine will almost put everyone else first to the point of erasing themselves. 
to where they're just like, I don't matter. And guys, you do matter. It's important that you do choose you sometimes. I would ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why do I always put everybody else first? There's a, there's probably a hidden hurt there that needs to be dealt with. You know, ask yourself, why do you pay attention to everybody else's needs before your own? Um, again, there's reasons why you're doing that. And as some of it is, is really awesome and I love it and it's admirable. Um, but some of it is we gotta, you know, take care of ourselves in order to serve others well. And so yeah, I just hope you hear that today that taking care of yourself will in the end serve others better. And the last thing I have for growth practices is learn to ask yourself, what do I want? It's a really hard question. I can't even answer it half the time, but learn to ask yourself, what do I want? This is okay. It's okay to do that because I want to say your opinions matter. They do. Your presence matters. Your opinion matters. And ask yourself, you know, what do I want? I would just end with start to wake up and show up to your own life. Guys, it's glorious. It's how I'm able to do YouTube. And um, it's important for a nine. Our voices matter just like everybody else's type. All the other people in the world, all the other types, everyone matters. That's me being inclusive, right? That's me making sure everyone feels good. But I'm just saying like, your opinion matters if you're a nine. Show up to your own life and it's worth it. But okay, so that's all I had today, guys. Those were 10 things that I wanted to share with you on how to work with a type nine. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys. You guys write me like some pretty awesome things. I have to say, and maybe everybody's YouTube channel is like this, I don't know, but I really appreciate that you guys take the time to let me know a little piece of your journey in this whole process. And I, I really, really appreciate that. So thank you for doing that. And yeah, that's, that's it. The series is over guys. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video, like I said at the beginning, it's super important um, for me to keep using this platform to educate you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I enjoy just all, I have just enjoyed this series a lot and I have so much more coming guys. I am so excited. I can't wait to let you guys know what's coming. Anyways, this video is probably way too long. Like they always are, you guys know. <sighs> I just can't do a short video to save my life sometimes. But until next time, bye guys.